When former Sullivan star Susan Hannaford invited cameras from another Australian TV network into her Beverly Hills home, she says they set her up, twisted her words and made her look like a fraudster. She told us she wanted to set the record straight. Welcome to Palazzo Beverly Hills. Please come in. Do you recognise this 65-year-old former Aussie TV star? Does this help? Quite a transformation, isn't it? Hi, I'm Susan Hannaford. I starred in the long-running hit series, The Sullivans. I may have played meek and mild Kitty Sullivan, but today I am angry and I'm very upset about what's been done to me. She's shitty kitty. Do you owe $14 million? No. It was brought up, it was invented. And it's not pretty. There is a $100 million lawsuit pending against What a us. pity. I think it's appalling. I think it's absolutely appalling. I think and we confirm... Absolutely set up. The whole thing. The whole thing. Her reported no, dead mother is still with us. How old is she? 96. 96. 96 and proud of it. In the 70s and 80s, she played Australia's sweetheart. We watched little red-haired Kitty grow up in the long-running nine series, The Sullivans. I want to say I'm sorry. Oh, it's not necessary to apologise to me, Kitty. There's no need. Oh, thank the you. The story of a middle-class Melbourne family and the effects the Second World War had on their lives. A quaint, old-fashioned world where things were simpler, conservative, and frugal. Dare I ask, but what's it worth? Well, we got an offer recently for $50 million. Life hasn't yes. imitated art for Susan Hannaford. You've come a long way <laughs> since the Sullivans, haven't you? Yes. <laughs> it's, called, it's called Billionaire's Row here. Is that right? Yes. I want to conquer the world. I mean... <laughs> In real life, actress Susan Hannaford was never too shy. Just up. Where do we go from here? Up. <laughs> or too red-haired, for that matter. Today, Susan is barely recognisable. Her rock-side blonde and racy outfits. Well, well, hasn't Kitty all grown up? Well, yes. It's, it seems like a long, long time ago when I played Kitty on the Sullivan. A different world. Oh, you bet. And so, it is probably no surprise that Susan Hannaford has ended up here, Tinseltown, where she has fitted in nicely among the ego's ambition, transformed bodies, and those seeking fame and fortune. Yes, this has been her home for nearly 20 years. Why did you come to LA? Why Hollywood? Well, it's such a big pond. It's a big pond over here, and I think it's challenging and, and exciting, and I wanted to further my business. Ah, oh, Mum and Dad. Over the years, we have brought you many stories on Sullivan reunions, but there was never any sign of Kitty. Kitty was there. Yeah, yeah Kitty was there. The cast hadn't set eyes on her since the show folded. That, think, wow. But real estate expert Robert Clarick did. It didn't matter what, which decade we were in, it was always a, a couple of million dollars worth more. If it was one million, she wanted three. If it was two, she wanted five. We reported first once again about the sudden and somewhat bizarre sale of her abandoned waterfront Sydney home. But we'll come back to what happened there a little later. So who lives in that house up there? Oh, that one. Uh, that house uh, belonged to Madonna, I believe. Really? Mm -hmm. Who else is around here? Well, um, just over here we have um, Jay-Z and Beyonce. This is home now. She bought it 15 years ago. Multi-acred. Multi-acred lot. In the hills of Beverly Hills. Swimming pools, movie stars. Oh yes, every house needs one of them. <laughs> It's the most beautiful home I've ever laid eyes on. It's, magni it's magnificent. I love yeah. this home. And you're not alone because the kids just came down. Hi, oh. guys, come down. Enter Bella and Dante. And here's where it gets a little confusing. Except for Bella, who's given this spiel before. She is my grandma and mom. Uh, he's my brother. My sister is technically my, uh, bi my biological mom. And my grandma is technically my great-grandma. 
Goodness and me. So <laughs> I'm really confused. <laughs> so tell me, wh wh why did that happen that way? Why? why? Um, well, um, my Kessa was a teenager when she had her babies, and uh, I adopted them. Marquesa is Susan's daughter, who's now all grown up and living in Canada. But let's get back to what's got Susan all hot under the collar. Criminal is what it is, it's forgery. The real story, she says, about the business that brought her here and how she's been stitched up to look like a fraudster. This should not happen. We have a long history with Susan Hannaford. After all, she was a nine star. Actor Susan Hannaford turned her talents to fashion designing and she quickly found a new kind of fame. Now Susan has been offered another acting role in a series that she says is just too good to refuse. To tell us more, would you please welcome Susan Hannaford. That's our Tracy back in 1995 on the Midday Show. Nice pants suit, Trace. But back to Susan. Not just any old series that you're joining, is it? It's Seinfeld. It's Seinfeld. It's a phenomenon in itself. <laughs> Fancy, Jerry, Elaine, George, Kramer and Kitty. What a show. I think working with uh, Jerry will be amazing, an amazing experience. So we watched and watched, but there was no Kitty. You mentioned on the Midday Show that you were going to be on Seinfeld. What happened? That just didn't pan out. But, you know, I love the way it's a stigma for the rest of your life. If one job doesn't pan out, that is a permanent stigma that you better live with. After investing heavily into herself and with acting drying up, she branched into business. And the fashion show was very successful. First, there was her high-class fashion shop, boasting high-end clients. Princess Stephanie, um, Farrah Fawcett Majors, um, Carly Simon, Duran Duran. When that folded, she went stateside and invested heavily into herself once again. There she is with President Bush, Luke Perry, Rupert Murdoch and Matt Damon. The profile helped her new day spa business that again boasted clients such as Mariah Carey and the Saudi royal family. But meanwhile, back in humble old Australia, the Hannaford business wasn't going so well. The police turned up and I believe they were, were evicted and a, a week or so later the, the sheriff turned up and changed the locks on the, on the, on the doors. Ed Darmanin was Susan's neighbour at her Sydney waterfront home who told us five years ago all sorts of weird happenings there. Yeah, as did Robert. The Commonwealth Bank want their money back. We were paying about forty to 50000 a month in uh, um, mortgage, uh, mortgage and interest. Uh, principal um, and interest and basically um, we had negotiated with the bank to pay interest only. For some reason, some unknown reason, the bank reneged on that uh, and that was the problem. Eventually and the Commonwealth Bank took possession and sold it from under her. The original debt was for four million dollars and even at the foreclosure sale which was th nearly 3.2 million dollars that paid off nearly all of that original debt However, while we sued them, they kept charging us interest. It's been reported she still owes the bank over $4 million. So the majority of the money that they allege is owed is in interest. While this Aussie property didn't go so well, her American ones were going gangbusters. After the break, Susan hits back at the controversy surrounding her US empire. Welcome back. Susan Hannaford became a household name as Kitty in the popular drama The Sullivans, but now it's her property empire that has people talking. Many years ago, we discovered Susan Hannaford had numerous American properties, particularly in California and Nevada. How did you get so many properties when you had nothing? Well, the very first home, and it was a beautiful white, it was a mansion, a beautiful white Victorian mansion in a place called Princes Hill in Melbourne. And that was when I was on the Sullivans. So even when I was virtually just out of my teens, I wanted to buy a house. So I made a, 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 you know, a nice little profit. Which enabled you to buy another one. Exactly. That's the concept. I mean, everything that I had done in Australia, I did the same thing over here. 
basically bought something as cheaply as I could and then I started to renovate it. You need to buy foreclosures, fire sales, uh, bankruptcies. Soon she had more American houses than That's beds in this bedroom. one. How many bedrooms are there? Oh, on this level, we have 10 bedrooms, and on the fourth floor, there's another four. But then, one day recently, she looked out over the fence. You know, I've been very happy for, gosh, nearly two decades, um, living a quiet life. Uh, and um, it's quite stunning to me that all of a sudden I had paparazzi camped outside the house, and I was being really harassed. She says she eventually and reluctantly agreed to do an interview with the Sunday night program. Susan wants to create the illusion that this is how she normally lives. She's lured these people to her home under the guise of being a Hollywood celebrity. There was a piano player, dog groomer, and not one, but two chefs. And I had no idea any of those people were coming. Susan says they were all set up by the program to create an event. She furnished us with the show's schedule, dictating the chef will be preparing lunch while the piano player tinkles. Further emails from Susan and her daughter ask, is that right? Remember, handyman Robert doesn't work here. He's confided to me that he's just auditioning for a job while our cameras are rolling. That is a lie. I have never said to Mr. Matt Duran that I was auditioning for a job here while- That's Robert the handyman. I've always been a paid houseman here at the Palazzo Beverly Hills. I'm extremely angry. I'm furious. Susan told us it's been made out she gets multiple mortgages on a property like this one she had in Las Vegas. On one day, one bank loaned her $3.72 million and another lender gave her an additional $3.7 million, adding up to more than double the value of the property. Can you take out two mortgages on one property? <laughs> no, no. That for, for, for someone to say that they could do that is a categoric lie. The system is like Australia. So, uh, you know, we, we have the same banking system in both countries and it's very regulated. There is one title deed. And she had the bank give us a statement saying they held the only deed of trust on the property mentioned. One deed, one bank. No one's chasing you in America for money? No. No one? No. Well, of course, we do have, you know, an IRS issue, which is being dealt with in the appeals court right now, and we're in audit reconsideration. Yes, she does have a debt with the American Internal Revenue Service, $1.5 million. But she says, that's it. A media reported $14 million debt is made up, she claims and no one in America other than the IRS is chasing her for different. any money. That is fraudulent, completely fraudulent. He but it is dear old Norma, Susan's mum, that she is most upset about. That's her. We interviewed Norma on the Midday Show 20 odd years ago. Where is Norma Parry? We've been unable to find Norma anywhere. Susan says it's been made out that if she was dead and there was some kind of debt, it would be hard to chase up a dead person given most of the properties are in Norma's name. When the recession hit, she decided to step in. And she also, uh, the loans were signed to her. So she, the property's going to her name, she is, the loan is assigned to her and that the banks approve it. So my mother is very wealthy um, and has done extremely well. And this is Norma today. We eat out nearly every day at hotels. There's pictures of Bella, nine-year-old Bella, Grandma, me. Norma lives with Susan at the home, but is not well enough to front cameras and do interviews. And she's the same age as um, Prince Philip. And she certainly doesn't live in a car park, as reported. In fact, Susan says the car park is that of the mailing centre she once used when she was running her business. This is wrong. Um, I decided to develop property. There was an opportunity in America, in Los Angeles and, and Las Vegas, and I, I, I maximized that opportunity. And I enjoyed it, it was fun. To, to try to make a scandal that doesn't exist is appalling. Kitty. Um, it was so much easier just living out the war in Melbourne. What? The Sullivans may have folded. <laughs> but there might just be an upcoming Hollywood saga. Starring Susan Hannaford, 
playing out on our television sets. She's now taken out a $100 million lawsuit against two Australian media organisations. Stay tuned for her walking into a courthouse wearing something skimpy soon. Channel 7's interview, was that paid for? Yes. How much did they pay you? They paid me in excess of $100,000. Was it worth it? No. <laughs> and just for the record, have we paid you for an interview? No, not one penny, no. Now I'm doing this because I, I must absolutely set the record straight. And you don't need my pennies. You've got enough. <laughs> and that's possibly the final word from Susan until that $100 million lawsuit happens.